Cool. So um, I'm going to be talking about Canvas and P5.js. Um, this is really a talk for people who have never heard of Canvas, uh, or maybe for those who have heard of it but haven't really used it ever. Um, sorry for those of you that perhaps know Canvas in and out, uh, but this, luckily this is only a 10-minute talk, so you can have a nap for 10 minutes if you want. Okay. Just waiting for everybody to close their eyes. Um, um, cool. So um, if you've not come across Canvas before, uh, it's part of H2, well, the Canvas element um, is part of HTML. Uh, it allows you to draw and manipulate pixels to the, the Canvas element. So I'm clicking a bit. I think I'm okay. I think it's just my microphone. Um, you can interact with uh, the can Canvas element uh, using JavaScript uh, with what's called the Canvas API. Uh, and the Canvas API provides a means uh, for drawing graphics via JavaScript uh, to the HTML Canvas element. Uh, amongst other things, uh, it's often used for animation, uh, games, data visualization, photo manipulation, real-time video processing, and, and then also kind of more creative things, uh, artistic things as well. Um, so this is an example of what the Canvas element looks like. Uh, it's not that kind of amazing. Uh, you've just got a start tag and end, end tag. Uh, you can stick an ID, ID on it. You need a width and height if it's going to be of any size, um, which is probably a good idea. Otherwise, people won't see your, your Canvas. Um, so uh, the Canvas API has a number of functions that enable you to interact with the Canvas element. Um, so you can do things like uh, draw an ellipse. You can draw a curve. Uh, you can set the line thickness. Uh, you can change the color of things. So that kind of thing, like it has these kind of built-in functions that enable you to do uh, things quite nice and easily. Um, so a bit about my interest in Canvas. Uh, why am I interested in Canvas? Um, and why am I talking here today? Um, so I work on uh, gov.uk. Uh, I work for HMRC. Uh, this is what gov.uk looks like. Um, um, sorry, I lost my place then. <laughs> um, so I've been working as a front-end developer for around 10 years. Um, but before that, um, I studied art, uh, fine art at university. During my time at university, I got uh, into what is sometimes called, uh, at the time was kind of called uh, various things such as generative art, software art, algorithmic art. Uh, but it's now kind of generally known under the umbrella term, perhaps creative coding or something like that. Um, creative coding is just like a, a type of computer programming where the goal uh, is to create something expressive, uh, artistic, and creative uh, rather than something that's purely functional. Um, so during university, one of my main tools for exploring these ideas um, was a graphical library called Processing, uh, which is an open source graphical library. Um, it has an IDE and it's kind of well established nowadays. Um, but it was really built for um, the electronic arts, new media art. Um, re re the aim of it was to teach non-programmers the fundamentals of computer programming in a visual context. So people that would not normally pick up uh, a computer and start coding, it was to kind of enable them to simply create what they wanted to. Um, the underlying language uh, that processing was built on top of was Java. Um, so not great for a front-end developer, particularly. Um, but things have come a long way. So we now have the Canvas element. Um, and then from that, uh, on top of this, we have P5.js, uh, the P5.js library, which has the same goal as processing does, uh, which is to make coding accessible for artists, designers, educators, uh, and beginners to uh, people, as I said, have ne who have never touched code before. Um, so P5.js and um, Canvas, uh, it's now in a browser context. You're not creating applications. Um, so there's a lot of kind of flexibility and stuff that we can do with, uh, with Canvas. Um, but the functionality is identical to processing, so, um, or, or very similar at least. So like a lot of the functions that processing created um, has now been ported to P5.js. Um, so I'm just going to show you um, a very simple demo of what um, like vanilla Canvas looks like and then what a P5.js version looks like. Um, so you can see here, we've got a very simple HTML file, um, nothing special going on. Uh, we've got a Canvas element at the bottom, and then I'm linking out to a sketch.js file. Uh, P5.js version, um, very similar. Uh, but we don't have the Canvas element. I'm just linking out to 
the p5.min.js library, in this case using a CDN. And then again, I'm just linking to um, the, my sketch.js. Uh, so uh, this is something I created. It's very simple and it's not very well written, but uh, it kind of gets across the idea. So this is the, the Canvas script version. So I created a function called draw. Um, inside that, um, I'm grabbing the canvas by get element ID by ID. Uh, we then have to um, get the context of the canvas. So this is like a mode. Um, there's various modes that canvas comes with. Uh, in this case, we're using 2D, but there's also WebGL. Uh, I think there's something called bitmap as well, which uh, I think it's a bit useless. Um, but uh, anyway, here we're using 2D because I just want to talk about 2D graphics. Uh, then I'm doing a, a few other things, um, things like fill style, which is like what color do you want to make something? Um, and then I've got fill rect, rect which is um, that's creating a rectangle of a certain size. This, in this case, it's 0, 0, which is top left-hand corner, to 400, 400, which is bottom right-hand corner. I then fill it, which actually draws the, the rectangle. Um, then I change the fill style color to white. I begin a path, in this case an ellipse draw my ellipse, there's loads of different things. I can't tell you what they all do, but I know the first four, which is X, Y, height and width. Um, we then fill it and then we stroke it, not like that. Um, we like, so stroke is like, like the outline of it. Um, and by, by default, it's like a black one pixel line. Um, just realized that you can't see the very bottom. Um, Anyway, so uh, then window.requestAnimationFrame, which is, uh, for those that are familiar with it, it's kind of like your um, animate. So it requests a f a f the browser to render of what you want it to. So in this case, uh, all the stuff that comes, uh, I then call draw, and then it just loops again and again inside this function. Uh, you can't quite see here, but I actually do execute the function right at the bottom, but that's covering it for some reason. Um, <laughs> So that's our vanilla canvas version. Um, the P5 version, uh, the, the kind of like, it does exactly the same thing, looks like this. Um, so it's a, it's a lot smaller, uh, a lot easier to read perhaps. Um, so with P5.js, you have to have two functions. Uh, you have to have the setup function and you have to have the draw function. I, I think that's true. Um, hopefully it's true. Um, I think it won't work if you don't have the setup and draw function. You can have the setup and have nothing inside it, but I think you do have to have it um, there. So we're creating a canvas 400 pixels uh, wide by 400 pixels high. Uh, we've then got the draw function, which is just a loop. Uh, I'm draw drawing a gray background. Um, P5.js is really good at interpreting your uh, colors. So I've got a single value here. Um, so it knows that I'm talking about monochrome values. So zero would be black, 255 would be white. So this is like a, a light gray color. Um, it knows all your kind of like things that we used to in CSS. So RGB, RGBA, hex colors, all those kind of things. Um, and then I'm just drawing an ellipse, uh, 50 pixels in, 50 pixels down, and it's 80 pixels in diameter. So um, I, this is what it looks like. Are you ready? Um, mm -hmm. There you go. So it's a free 10 minute talk, what were you expecting? Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so not, not kind of the most amazing thing, but um, just to kind of show you vanilla JS, uh, vanilla canvas versus P5.js. Um, just uh, so P5.js makes things a lot easier. Um, so perhaps you're thinking, um, or perhaps not, I'd probably think the latter. Um, but uh, maybe you're wondering uh, if, the can can Oops, sorry. if the canvas is like an impenetrable element uh, and other, de other DOM elements can't interact with it. Thankfully, the answer is no, um, which is great. Uh, it means we can have our canvas behind, in front of, above, below other elements, uh, which makes it really flexible. Um, so I've got a very quick demo, if it's going to work. Um, so this is just a very, very simple demo I created. Um, so you can see I've got an ellipse that just moves across the screen. Um, and then I've got an H1, um, and then which I'm coloring. And then I, I just um, moved the canvas behind the H1. So it, it just shows you that you can kind of like, you can have normal DOM elements, you can have your canvas, and, and it will interact with these things. So uh, back to the other. 
back on the slide. So um, very briefly, this is what the code looks like. So I've just this is my CSS on the left. So I've just got I've selected my canvas element, position absolute uh, zero zero top left. Uh, then I just did z index minus one to just bring it behind your h1. Um, and then I'm just doing various things. Kind of most of this should be familiar from the previous thing. Um, but instead of background, I'm doing clear, which uh, instead of drawing like colored pixels to the canvas, it just it clears the, the, uh, anything that's on the screen every single frame. Uh, if you didn't have clear and you like, had an ellipse and it kind of moved across the screen, you just get like a trail of ellipses. Um, so you have to use clear or background to kind of clear the, clear the frame. Uh, then I'm just moving it across. Uh, P5.js comes with loads of kind of really great utility functions. So there's this one, window resized, which uh, will execute every time the browser's resized. Um, and then inside that, I'm just saying resize the canvas. Uh, in this case, I'm saying uh, resize it to the window's width. So when, when it, uh, whatever I resize it to, it will resize your, my canvas. Um, so there's loads of stuff that I'd love to talk to you about uh, when it comes to P5.js and Canvas, uh, but haven't got time. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about three libraries. Um, there's a number of different libraries that kind of build on top of uh, P5.js. Um, three, of the, three of them are official, so these three are official. So we've got P5 uh, DOM. Uh, this allows you to create DOM elements, uh, and it allows you to connect it to your Canvas. Um, so you could, for instance, have a create a slider with P5.js that would then uh, change the color or position of something inside your canvas. So you might have like a slider that changes the color of something. Um, you can also create things like color pickers, buttons. You can listen for DOM events. Uh, and you can connect all these things really nice and easily um, to your canvas. Uh, P5 sound. Um, so this is, allows you to kind of listen to audio input, so microphone or line in or something like that. You can play back audio really nice and easily. Uh, you can analyze audio, um, so like frequency analysis or something like that. And you can also synthesize audio as well. So um, I think I saw a demo where somebody was actually kind of imitating the human voice and it was interpreting text and reading it out. Um, and P5 accessibility. Um, so this looks like a really interesting looking library. Um, I haven't had much of a chance to explore it, uh, but what I can gather is that um, it exposes things that are inside your canvas to assistive tech. So things like screen readers, um, braille uh, readers, or I don't know what they're called, you know, braille uh, devices. Um, so I saw an example where there were a couple of ellipses bouncing around the screen inside the canvas. Uh, and what was being output to the screen reader was kind of where the balls were. So it'd be like the red ball is uh, top left, bottom left, middle left, uh, bottom right, and things like that, which I think that's just amazing that you can kind of like, you can uh, kind of um, expose that to screen readers and let people who are blind actually kind of have an understanding of what's going on inside their canvas. Um, so uh, my intention with this talk um, is that if you've never used Canvas before, uh, then it should, this should just show you a tiny bit of what it can do, get you thinking about what you might want to do with it. Um, so these are kind of some of the things that basically I've nicked, but then kind of uh, changed slightly. Um, so uh, I didn't create all this wonderful stuff, but it's kind of built on top of other people's work. Um, um, and finally, um, with a bit of playing around, it doesn't take much to create what you want. Uh, so let's say that you're bored one weekend, um, and you might decide to create something like this in Canvas. Oh no, it's not working. Uh, what? Oh, I should have tested this. Anyway, there, there's my head. It's not quite working properly. I should have tested it before, but you get the gist. Space Invaders with Sam and Colin. There you go. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you.